welcome to another video. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. And today we are doing a video based on this sent in from Kate. She's interested in that middle bracelet. Unfortunately, her uh, image is kind of blurry, but uh, we'll work it with it. All right, so I've taken the liberty of getting myself the graph paper from my website. And I have cut a little blurry image over here. And we're going to do what we can. So, let's see what we can do. Um, we'll take this color here, because this is obviously kind of what runs through the whole thing. And we are going to start with it. Now, you can see it sort of comes out, right? So if we were going to try to create this as our line to begin with, what we'll need to do... Whoa! Control Z, what do we got here? Oh, bad setup. All right, there we go. So that's going to look like this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and it comes back inwards. So you can tell this has basically been unrehearsed, unedited. This is real time of me working out how this pattern works. So you can see here, I'm going to put in where that string goes and how it moves along. Now, I don't want my channel to become Kevin Saul's all of everybody's, you know, bracelet pattern, whatever. But when I took a look at this one, I could kind of see where somebody might get hung up. And I thought maybe this would be a good one to kind of demonstrate how to figure it out um, so that way you guys don't have that same, whoop, gotta be careful, don't hit the little black lines, that with a paint tool. Anyways, so I thought this would be a good one to kind of demonstrate how to use the graph paper to do this. Now, mind you, um, I was able to actually work out this pattern in my head, but I can't teach that. So I'm going to try my best to show you if it was beyond my capability what would I do? And um, that's where the graph paper comes in. Anytime it's so difficult that you just can't sort it out, this is how I would do it. I would get the graph paper out and I would just make it, you know, exactly like this. Now, mind you, this is a seven string bracelet, so that's going to be kind of weird. I suspect maybe you're going to have to do a macrame for the loop, I'm assuming. It's because it's seven strings coming up one side, you know, and seven down the other. So, right, that makes a loop. All right, so let's grab the next color. The next color will be this one out here, right? This nice darker one. Let's see if we can get something darker. There we go. Um, once you picked your color and you start to use it, grab from in here. Don't keep coming back to grab from out there. If you want to end up changing this into like say a rainbow or something later on, you can use this tool up here and grab all of the one color. But if you have multitude shades, then that's not going to work. So all right. You can see I'm kind of easily just going along and putting this in. Um, I'll come back and I'll add the underlying string for it. So. Right. Every once in a while, get caught on those. And you can see, I'm not going to go all the way down. I'll, I'll leave the link on the web page for the whole finished thing. It just repeats itself. Realistically, you don't need to go even this far with it. Um, 
because really what you're trying to figure out is how what are the colors here you know when you start it off what where do you begin um, once you have that the rest really will kind of force itself into place but because there's a mystery to be had we're going to kind of fill this out a little bit more all right let's do the pink that runs through here And you can see that if the string came this way and the pink had come through here, it had to have turned. And of course, because it's supposed to be over here as well, then that, whoops, that makes perfect sense, right? And it zigzags over here. And we have it coming to the right and then to the left. And it can only come back this way. So the mystery should work itself out when you put in all of the things that you already know. Right? So you can see so far, so good, right? Nothing, nothing overly complicated. So except for trying to stay within the lines. Uh, so that's what Control Z is for. Mind you, I'm using the program GIMP. Um, I'm sure that I have mentioned that in the past. Oh, actually, that was supposed to go back out the other direction. This would be here. All right. Um, GIMP is a free app. It works on Windows. It works on the apples as well as a Linux machine. Mine just happens to be a Linux, but you don't have to have a Linux to use it. So now we have this sort of a purple for the middle dot, right? And you can kind of easily see it goes up this way. Okay, so we know the purple comes back because it has to come to here, and this is the only possible path. But if we had put in the colors from out here, this blue, you would see that the blue is, turns back. So that's pretty obvious. Okay, still still that mystery I spoke of not seen yet so hang on let's get this here done <laughs> really annoyed by my own performance but this is the kind of stuff that I suppose I could edit out but I think it's sort of also important to see that, you know, this same kind of stuff will happen to me, not uh, completely without flaws or anything. So, and I'm going to leave this down here so you can kind of see how the bracelet would finish out, right? So, again, it'll be on the finished thing on the web page but you can kind of get an idea of how if you were trying to do it how you basically want to be able to see where the ends are of what strings are coming out the end all right so next let's do this blue we know that it goes here and it's going to come in this way um, I had somebody ask why the starting of the graph paper is in the shade of blue that I have and the reason for that is it's roughly the color blue that you would see on a graph paper that you buy at the store and they use that color because it doesn't really show up when you do the Xerox copies so if you were trying to fill something in you know with uh, color pencils and stuff you can get away with that one color that Xerox somehow leaves out. 
it's kind of like a green screen for those machines. Oops. We'll just shut that one. Okay. And then we have this color green, which goes into these squares. So this one comes up. comes out right there. Now typically when I fill in these kind of things I use colors that are way more um, contrast. If I was going to use a green I'd use something really super bright and whatever so that way I can easily trace it and I can see exactly where it is. Um, but I suspect most of you, when you're looking at these things, you've already got it in your mind that you want to make a bracelet that looks like perhaps like the one that was sent in by Kate or something that you've seen where elsewhere. So I thought maybe this time I would actually show you how you can actually use the colors from the image that you picked up. Okay. So here's the thing. We have six colors, but there were seven strings in order to make this actually work out. In order to have the three here and one, and to have this, to have the little dot in the center. So here's where the dilemma came in. Um, I suspect when it came to trying to figure out how was this drawn out or created. And the reality is that well, what I would do if I were making this, I would make it the same color as this one. If this one were to somehow cross with the with this unused, um, I would be inclined to use it because this is the color that will be absolutely used the most. This will be the second color used um, the most in the sense that uh, you can just see, like, you know, you have like what nine knots here? No, three four, five, six, seven, eight, eight knots to make this little thing. Only one of this one, right? These two are doing the, the bulk of all of the work. So seeing as how these, this and what is left will cross, you can use it as the string for, to, for the, the extra string, the seventh string. And that way, when you get to this point here, right, this one will have been going along and along and along. You can swap because it doesn't matter which direction they go in it when it's the same color. A lot of times I've, I've mentioned that in my tutorials, right? Um, but that's that was the trick of this was that there is six colors in the bracelet, but seven strings. And that, as I'm sure, is what kind of messed Kate up. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to draw it out on the other side as well. Um, and I'll leave that on the website. But, and, you know, and again, that's because I, I suspect you're going to have to um, do something like a, like a macrame or whatever. Because if it's eight strings, you could do a kumi. But seven strings, that's not enough for a kumi. So I'll draw it up completely for you. And uh, there you go. That's how I solved the mystery of how this pattern was done. All right. So until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch.